Yeah. 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 So I was just watching Gary's um, video again. Uh, not not the same video. The uh, this most recent one that he made. Um, called uh, stuff that happens can't subjectively unhappen where he's you know going on about you know hey our biology has pain we recognize pain uh, and suffering and the difference between cupcake and a nail in the eye and and you know this is this is evolutionary and I can't believe I'm even having a topic about this and the the people that are trying to make, uh, you know, sensation a uh, subjective uh, discussion or value, uh, subjective kind of like value relativists that are sensing their sensations in a, in a subjective way, you know. And and I know this is spurred on because because I was talking about having a binary lingual description of, you know, badness and goodness or uncomfort, discomfort. That's horrific. That's blissful. I'm in heaven now. Eh, now things suck, you know. And then there's this this idea of fineness. And and I sat there and I thought, how how do how do I how do I like grant that over in its entirety? Right and say, okay, that's that's the surface level description of pain and 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 bliss and the the evolutionary nervous system, you know, and and what it is we call uh, badness and, and goodness relative to sensation, and 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 so yeah, it's like okay, that's 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 fine. That's all. That's all kind of a given, you know, like when I experience, you know, I step on uh, a, a piece of metal, something jagged, or I, I get a bee sting, or I'm, you know, running my finger over a uh, an open wound or something like, you know, I jerk back, I recoil, I, I'm like, Ugh, you know, things are a little bit ouchy, but I, I sat there and I thought, okay, so... You know, and then what we do is we call the recoil bad, you know. But I, I guess I guess how I want to come at this is to talk about kind of aberrants and chronic situations. Kind of like, okay, orgasms are supposedly, you know, these blissful states uh, that people reach. And yet some women are proclaimed to have you know, many, many unstoppable orgasms in a day to the point where it's disquieting. It's It becomes uncomfortable to the point where this, this repeated blissful sensation is, you know, and, and I'm sure they're not talking about the utilitarian aspect, but it's it's so good so often it's it's so unnerving. So this blissful state is sensually bad to them, right? And in, in, in my case, you know, it, it's weird. It's weird. My case is a, a little weird because, you know, I have, I have these broken feet that are all kind of mangled and, and, you know, surgically put back together. And I was on painkillers, which were, which were really weird, you know, painkillers – don't always get rid of the pain. I, you know, depending on the painkiller, some of them are more psychological. Some of them are dealing at the location. Some are dealing in 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 the brain. Uh, you know how it is they're trying to stop the nerve sensation. It, it's kind of weird, but so I I I don't think about it anymore. But it this discussion in a way has me thinking thinking. Like, okay, my normative behavior now on my feet is is accepted, right? And I kind of, you know, when I think about this kind of discussion about sensation and description, 
then I'm like, okay, analyze your body's sensual happenings right now. And I guess I could say when I'm thinking about it, there is this dull roar that is indefinite and always stemming from my feet. But I don't, I don't think about it, right? It's not really there. Like, it's, it's so constant that it's not, it's not present. It's present when it's focused upon. And, and so this, this appears to be an actual experience that, that I am going through, that I get to discuss, right? And it is something that, that's kind of odd. Now, I had a friend growing up, this, you know, childhood friend, uh, his dad. Um, you know, anytime I would say, oh, I got a headache, or any of his kids would say, he'd say, well, I'm going to stomp on your foot and maybe your headache will go away, right? And I say that to illustrate the idea that kind of like, like, <laughs> you know, it's like I was anticipating this friend coming over when I was like 12. And when I was 12, I'd have these like incredible stomach, uh, just, just sensations and pains that were crippling and I'd have to go to the toilet and I'd sit on the toilet for like two hours whether I was pooping or not and I'd have to hum to kind of like calm vibrate the belly and calm it and get it through this this sensation right and um, and 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 so it wouldn't buckle me over and I could I could get back to normal you know and and it was just it was kind of funny because I was anticipating this friend showing up one time and I hadn't seen him in so long and I was so excited to see him and I, I was I was buckled over and when I heard the door knock I just got up and straightened up and just walked through the pain to my friend it you know it was it was very peculiar and it, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like at other times, you know, it's like, wow, I, even when I had this, like, really acute fucking, like, post-surgery pain, someone would come over and they would tell me a joke. And, and for the moment that I was following their story, it's like the, the pain, the sensation was no longer there, right? And so it's, it's, this, it's this phenomena that words, stories, other symbols can transpose, take you away from your sensual, supposed, quote-unquote, whatever your sensation is. And I think that that is an, is an interesting phenomenon. So, so the, you know, these, these are two things, you know. Number one, if, if something is a chronic issue, whether it's orgasms or whether or not it's feet pain, and it's chronic, so chronic, in fact, that it becomes the normative base. So if somebody asks how that person is doing and they say, oh, I'm fine, they're talking like on this normal level, right? But this isn't comparable to what a normal healthy body is going through, their, their general notion of, of pain or pleasure, it has, it has nothing to do with that, right? And yet, to them, it becomes the new, the new normal. So, so it's almost like they have to reinvestigate and say, oh, I, I guess because I am sensing this that other people would think is either blissful or hell, I, you know, yeah, I, but I'm saying that I'm fine. You know, how, how peculiar is that? And what is to be said about that? And that's when I bring this up. It's like, wow, I just say I'm fine. You know, I, I work out at a, a, a gym, and I say, you know, when my muscles are, are reaching this, like, really loud, I can't go on, and it's burning, it's burning, you know, it's like... Ah, uh, you know, is pressing, and I know, you know, the most appropriate thing to do is to say this is bad. This is bad, but it's it's not bad, and it's weird because when I get home and I ache, it reminds me of when I broke my feet in my back, and it, it's kind of like reliving this, 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 this crippled 
you know, pain to the point where you can't move sort of thing. And it's funny because the narrative at the moment, the fact that the concurrent supposed negative crippling effects are a reminder of something that was, which was uh, more devastating in the past, kind of takes on this, this weird sort of um, like a positive narrative. Like, wow, you know, this is, this is, it's like a cartoon reenactment of something much worse. And, you know, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of like when I think about when I was 12, having, having my first orgasm, you know, what a crazy, wild, weird, exciting experience that was. It was just absolutely crazy, absolutely stunning. You know, my first few orgasms were unlike anything my, my body had ever known before. And they, it was just, it was, it was mind blowing. And I think over the years of all the orgasms I've had, you know, with sexual partners or with, with myself, uh, but just orgasms in general. And, and I think, wow, my physiology is actually, you know, it's going through the same process. It's doing the same thing. And yet somehow this, this context of experience and repetition and expectation and knowledge and all of this contextual meanness, mindness, experience kind of takes the, the current orgasms and it, 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 it makes them so nothing, so tiny, so unimportant, you know? And it's kind of like that. It's kind of like that. Um, it's this, and, and I, I suspect that a lot of depressives or, you know, people that are negative on life have done the same thing. It's like, wow, all of this experience, all of this life, all of this, everything just kind of makes my life seem, even with its pleasures, so just, you know, nothing. It's just, it's unimportant. But my point is, is, is that such a great sensation can be made so nothing, you know, so in comparison, the context, the mind, the attitude, the repetition, all of it, it's like it overcoats and contextualizes it and recontextualizes it. And I guess that's why I'm making this video. I'm making this video because when I listen to, you know, Amanda try to reinforce and talk about how stupid it is for people to try to nuance and speak of the nuance, uh, subtle differences, the quality, the quality of one's whole being and their approach and reapproach and navigation to the concurrence of physiological pain, the remembrance of it, the lingual transition, the, the pulling away from it, kind of like in Fight Club, you know, he burns, he's got the chemical burn on his hand, and all of a sudden he's in a dream, and then he smacks himself and says, wake up, you know, you're missing the great thing, the greatest thing in your life, and he's referring to the greatest thing in his life to be facing awake the knowledge that what he's going through is this devastation. And in the, in the movie, that's portrayed as something amazing that somebody needs to embrace. And I, I've identified with that. But my point is, it's, it's that being able to shift right away and out of, kind of escape your neuronal, your, your ganglia, escape your ganglia, right? And, and it... it it's, it's weird because for me, you know, it can go away for a while and then you're back in your body and you're feeling what it's feeling. But then, but then when it's chronic and never leaves, when it never leaves, you know, it, it, it's funny because Gary, Gary was saying, you know, I wish these people the most painful death. And here he is, you know, walking in the forest, having a cigarette, talking about this and that. And, and yet, um, 
you know, I'm I'm sitting there like, wow, you know, I guess I am living the most painful death because I'm I'm going to die, and and here it is, while you know, from point now till I guess forever, I'm gonna have, you know, when I think about it, when I think like I guess that's not how feet used to feel or should feel, you know, that I will have this this affliction. And I'm not, you know, demeaning anyone else's affliction. I'm just saying, you know, it's just kind of funny, you know, like I would go visit my 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 great grandma and she'd be sitting in a chair and she could barely move, but you know, she was always had this kind of like happy to see you because she was happy to see you. And it's as if the happiness of seeing me overrode her affliction. And, you know, it makes me think about, you know, people, and this is just kind of a side note, that that are dilapidated mentally, and then when they're on their deathbeds and, and their kids are there or somebody's there saying goodbye, somehow they reach this moment of clarity. It's like this this shoot that they go through that that clarifies things. And so all I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, chronic pain or chronic orgasm can be melded away from one another, right? And then acute notions, can, you know, happening, you know, fresh fear, anticipation of pain, in a way, it, you know, that's the other thing. Anticipation of pain or anticipation of ecstasy is this weird phenomena in and of itself because it unnerves the body emotionally before there's anything, you know, people get more upset, like, knowing they have to go get a shot, or they might get stung by a bee, than actually getting stung by the bee or getting the shot, you know. It's like, oh, that wasn't so bad, you know. And and so, and then, and then the, the idea of not a utilitarian effect, like, if I keep working out and feel that pain, boy, I'm going to feel great later on, you know, or I'm going to look great later. You know, that's one thing that one could talk about, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about how one is contextualized through their history, how they deal with the pain, how they think about it, how they ignore it, how they move through it, right? And so my point is that we have this lingual system of, you know, of ups and downs and binaries and goods and bads and, and you know, always making things, you know, really positive or really negative. But, you know, it's... It, it, there's there's this middle ground that that is benign that you can describe your being as being fine and not meaning comfortable, but you're not trying to give a distressed notion of you know you're trying to say how it is you feel and so we we talk about it but it's that's why poetry is so amazing because you can meander not just escape words not just be you know, move through them, in and out of them, beyond them, but you can you can work through description, like, wow, my intestines were really bloated, and I felt this air ball move through them, and it was very unnerving, you know, okay, unnerving being the first negative value word, unnerving, right, and so, but it's it's also weird, because I miss that that process because it reminds me of something else and so there there's something about working out and having it mimic something historic or eating like jalapeno or putting a cigarette out in the hand or something that invites one to the realm of witnessing that they are witnessing their body go through this ecstasy or this 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 hell without really describing when you're just the witness that you're you're like wow i'm just happy that i'm alive i think there's even a song about it like you know you you I, i'm not even certain how it goes but i'm sure it's like hey i went through hell just to know that i'm alive or something of that effect anyway so so these are different scalable considerations and reapproaches, reconsiderations, right? So I'm I'm by no means trying to say that describing the sensation as bad or this sensation as good is not a possibility and is not like a 
a recognized form of delivery. But, you know, after so many years with so much experience, uh, both good and bad and neutral and otherwise, I keep pointing to the otherwise and I keep coding the whole thing as one big witnessed uh, variance. You know, there's this variance of possibility of of experiencing things, you know. It's almost like if someone could say, you know, like, hey, I want to turn you 24 and allow you to live at the age of 24 forever, but you're always going to have a fucking, uh, you know, the sensation of a needle being under your big toe, big toenail, right? And, and basically, it's just going to be there, and you just have to get used to it, right? And so I, I just wonder whether or not people would go, wow, just the zest, the zest, pain or no pain, the zest. And even by zest, you know, zest is such an interesting word to use because it's not really a positive or a negative. It's like a refreshing, like newness. It's zest, right? And um, like exhilaration, there's another one. That's, that could be negative, that could be positive. I was exhilarated, right? I was horrifically excited. Anyway, I don't want to go on too long, because as you guys all know, I tend to ramble. But, but I, guess, I guess what I'm really trying to drive home, as if I hadn't said it already, is, is like the orgasm after so much time, or pain revisited in my mind after so much time. And, and clarify that the context is so meaty and variable and contrasted with past experience, and it becomes so uh, minute, or it can become so, like, remembered and, and enter it fully, right? And, and there is no by necessity need, regardless of whatever the qualia is, Qualia, the concept of qualia is so, so important. And, you know, it's not just consciousness, it's qualia. The qualia of one's internal state, regardless of whether or not they have pains or have pleasures. The, the concurrence, you know, I'm getting a blowjob and I'm burning a cigarette out of my hand at the same time. Wow, the qualia of the one mind, the being that is going through this, this multi-dimensional, multi-colored, multi-valued sensation, rethinking, re-experiencing, re-approaching, and, and what of that person's qualia state at any given time. I mean, we are verbs moving through things. So, you know, knowing that we're going to bubble over positives and negatives and then bubble over just data in general and get all of this intellectual, yeah, difference uh, of, of quality of existence is what is so, I think, like, it's what makes life, witnessing life, so extra amazing. Right. So, and it's funny, you know, Gary smokes, and you know, I have my experience with smoking and so forth. But you know, it's like my first cigarette burned my lungs, and then I quit for a while, and then when I came back, I it burned my lungs again. And, and I'm thinking, okay, so here's cigarette smokers, and after a while, they're they're smoking, and and certainly, the 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 physics of the smoke going into the lungs should be burning their bodies, but somehow they they become immune to it. The pain that once was, is no longer there. Somehow, even though the, the physics of the matter is the same, the physiology is roughly the same, somehow a shift of acceptance with either their body or their mind has allowed the smoking process to continue smoothly. It, 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 they've become accustomed to that, right? So what of that subtle difference and how can we speak about pain in a, in a way which, which would suggest like like the word bad like wow that was a badness like speaking about 
like, oh, I had a pain, but then I thought of something else, and it kind of went away, and then it came back, and then it went away, and then it, it just kind of faded. It faded into the background. It moved into the periphery. And I guess that's what I'm looking for with this idea of value words, like, well, it was a badness that slid into isnessness. Badness is ness 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 ness, right? It's like that's what it. Oh, it was it was excellent. It was so good, and then you know my mother-in-law showed up, and you know it slid into uh, good, excellent, goodness, badnessness, right? Like like words that actually have like a verbal wampage wave to them that actually is probably more descriptive that's really only found in literature and poetry. And I guess, I guess, I guess, that's my point, is there's still more to all of this other than this kind of trite, very narrow, outlined, cut-outedness of pain be bad and bad is bad, <laughs> right? Which is, which is, it's, it's like the, you know, it's like, oh, uh, you know, listening to Gary talk, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like watching a kid play with blocks, you know, with letters on it. I spell cat, and it is this way. Gravity laid the blocks down. It's not any other way. You can't put the block on its edge. You can't put it on the corner. I don't want to look at get three letters at once or two letters it's only one there's only one letter that's up and up is up right and so there's this kind of like block outedness notion that's not really um sophisticated in how it can think about or maneuver through the minutia the nuance, the subtlety, the minutia of qualia and sensation and people's experience of people's testimony. No, no, no. It's, it's this weird kind of chopping down of things into this blanket outline state saying that is what it is and then a quickly appealing to, you know, that's what a nervous system is. It's badness and goodness and it's sensation and, and you know, appealing to the lowest common denominator as if that has to be the case. And, and this, once again, I think is a um, kind of a, uh, a, a trite outline trying to two-dimensionalize things to, to kind of keep human experience in like a logical Venn diagram of pluses and minuses. Right to maintain this binary approach. Anyway, I guess I've said my piece. If you know what I'm talking about, give me a thumbs up, make a comment, help me out here, give me a little story or an anecdote of, of how maybe you know you stabbed your toe and your grandma gave you a brownie and a hug and, and showed up at the door and you were you it, the pain went away, right? And and what it meant to go through that transition. Right, as opposed to like saying, you know, at that time when the pain was there before grandma showed up in the brain, it really hurt and I cried. But it's funny how our physiology cries and expresses or tightens up or pulls away or pushes or pulls or attracts and loves. Or, you know, it's just funny how our physiology deals with these quality of emotions. It, it, it's interesting. But but still, to tritely narrow things into some outlined binary, just, just to try to like, make human uh, variants of quality and qualia uh, um, form fit to, uh, uh, to logic for the sake of making you know, further statements uh, in philosophy is, is um, well, obviously that's what I'm against. <laughs> okay, there's 30 minutes. Thanks. Bye. Bye.